Sister Rosalie Esquerra, Maria Antonia. Yes, that's my, the the, former, my sister name. The, for, the former name. Um, thank you for coming to share your journey with us. You're, you're a significant part of our history as Adrian Dominicans. And then you have a very significant ministry and uh, it will be on YouTube so you can tell your colleagues that they can hear about themselves and about their leader on YouTube and I'll tell you how you can go about that. Okay? Oh, wonderful. So yeah. maybe to begin with we could start with your journey at the beginning of your life. Where are you from and your siblings and schooling and how you became an Adrian Dominican? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm from a little town in Arizona called Kingman. Okay. And um, my background is, and what's so special about um, uh, my town and our family is that we were like the co-founding, part of the co-founding families in Kingman. Um, my grandmother and my mother, my mother, my mother's mother, uh, yeah. She came from Chihuahua, Mexico, and uh, in the early 1900s, and met my uh, grandfather, and um, they and they married, and uh, they had four children. Uh, the uh, on my dad's side, his uh, grandfather, he didn't want to get involved in the wars in Mexico, so he followed the Colorado River up to. Arizona Territory. Now this is before Arizona's a state, so okay. it's uh, mm -hmm. in the early 1900s, and he established a homestead. It's actually a, um, a home uh, see, a, seen as a, a, a state, it's state recognized as the Escara Homestead in oh. the Parker, uh -huh. Arizona area. And um, he, in the 30s, he came and to Kingman, which is not that far away from Parker, and looking for the woman of his life, <laughs> and met my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, they married and uh, around 1934, and uh, mom and dad had 13 of us. <laughs> and where do you come? And I'm the third. Uh, there's, uh, I, have, I have a special little story with that. Uh, in, in 1944, there were four of us. There was my brother Raymond, my sister Mary Louise, myself, Rosalie, and my brother Roger. Roger was a baby, and whooping cough hit the area. And um, my sister Mary Louise died. Oh. And when that happened, my mother was so sad, and she, looking at our names, she says, she must have died because she didn't have an R in her name. And oh so from then on, the, the ones that followed, the, then uh, came, uh, uh -huh. uh, 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 see, uh, there was, okay, so it was myself, uh, um, the, I'm just going to go with the R's now, uh, Raymond, the oldest, myself, Rosalie, Roger, then Roland, Ronald, Richard, uh, Robert, Regina, Rebecca, Rachel, uh, Rita, and uh, Randolph. And, uh, <laughs> and, the, the, and we come from a, a small town and we're Mexicanos. And so of course, uh, we're not that educated or quote, you know, that's the, the, the label that's given us. Correct. Uh, but my mother would remind us, and I remember you have a very special talent. You speak two languages. And uh, the uh, and I have a brother that got a doctorate in mathematics, okay. taught at a university in Sacramento. Wonderful. And uh, a brother that when he had gone to the seminary, but um, when they, who, you know, when they turn eighteen, he has to sign in for the draft, be the seminary or not. Anyway, they gave him a test and says, "We need you." And my brother became. Uh, um, a special agent in uh, electronics and things like that, and went all over God's 40 acres. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he spent some time in Greece and met oh his my. wife. Uh -huh. And uh, a few years later, uh, he went to Iran for the, the work that he was doing, and uh, his son was born, little Raymond. 
-hmm. And so we, we have a very special history of um, breaking the labeling Good. that is given to some people. Mm -hmm. Now, in looking at uh, my, my own life, in looking at, uh, you know, the sisters, the Adrian Dominican sisters came to my hometown when I was ready to start school. And uh, the, uh, like Sister Maria in Villalara was my kindergarten teacher, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> she was so funny. I wasn't doing so well, and she t I still remember, I can still see it. my mother was at the door and Sister was saying, we need to keep her another year. And I was at the blackboard and said, but look, I can write. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was kept another year. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but very young, I wanted to be a sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I was very close to the sisters. My family was very close to the sisters. I think maybe being in a small town, mm -hmm. you know, and my mother was very involved in the school and things. Well, that's good. With her big family, she took yes. the time. To, well, that's great. Yes. She oh. wanted you all to be educated, it sounded oh, like. Oh, for yes. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then, uh, like I said, I wanted to be a sister when I was very young. I'd, I'd dress up and cover my head and all that kind of thing. But I was so little, I was still jumping on the sofa. sofa. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, when we were in, um, uh, I was in ninth grade, uh, there was a group of us that would go with Father Grywe to a mission town to say Mass, mm -hmm. and we'd be his little choir. And one day when we were coming back, he says to us, you girls, have you ever thought of being a sister? Oh, the car went berserk. We were so jumping. <laughs> uh, jumping for joy or jumping? Jumping for joy. Oh. oh, my goodness. Well, within, uh, by December, now this was the end of summertime, you know, doing the mission work yeah. that we did. Uh, by December, we had, I had talked to uh, Sister Rose Gilbert, who was the principal mm -hmm. at the time, and we got the paperwork done into Adrian and, and in May of 1955. I was on the road to Adrian. Uh, the black family, they, had, uh, they already had four girls that had entered the convent. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, right, Madonna. Right Madonna, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And three of us, uh, were in the car being oh, brought I to see. Adrian, okay. and they were uh, Raffaelita, uh, Roberta, and myself. And uh, the moment I stepped on the f grounds of Adrian, I was home. It was just, uh, just you knew really, it. Uh -huh. it in my heart. I just felt mm -hmm. I'm home. So anyway, uh, so that was 1955, um, and and the, the, the you finished high school. Uh, in Adrian in a year and a half yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I uh, uh, I had just finished ninth grade when right. I entered. Wow. Uh -huh. But you weren't a prep or you were a prep? No, no I they wasn't didn't a prep. Have the preps at that time. Oh, yeah, they did have preps, but I didn't okay. come in as a prep because okay. I came in after one year of high school. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think if you entered after eighth grade, you were into the preps. Okay. Anyway. And the, the the years that I have been part of the community is I you know began by teaching and I was sent to a, Our Lady of Sorrows in the East Side, mm -hmm. and I think the um, the community placed me in areas where there was mm -hmm. challenges, mm -hmm. uh, especially cultural challenges. Mm -hmm. It was a changing school from uh, the Belgian community mm -hmm. to the African American community, and uh, I was there for about six years. And I remember one day, one of the little ones, little first graders, she went up to one of the sisters and says, where's my sister? And the sister says, who's your sister? She's the one that looks like me. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord gave me the gift of uh, people identifying right. with me of different cultures right. because African American, Native American, Asian, mm -hmm. even Arabic people. Uh, many times, even to, to this day, they'll come up to me and say, you look just like my mother. You look like my grandmother. You look like my aunt. Can I give you a hug? You know, okay. and it's different cultures. And I'm so grateful, especially in this time when there's so much stress on culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by your presence, 
who are welcoming knows that feel yes. unwelcome. Mm -hmm. You can. And the Lord has given me the gift of, of uh, receiving people. Mm -hmm. uh, and they know that they're being received. I grew up in a family, you know, we were a big family, and uh, our home was a place where everybody came for the holidays. Mm -hmm. So we were just, uh, and it's, uh, it was a joyful celebration. So your, your upbringing, even with your large family, was just a happy place. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Probably a lot of people wanted to come and be with you because mm -hmm. you had more happiness in that large family than some do. And, Could know. be. Yeah. Uh, but, and then the other would, was that many day, times my dad would give my mom a call and say, now this, this person, I met him and they haven't eaten for three days. Can I bring him home? And my mother was us. If they, say, you know, we can, if, if they like beans and rice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my dad would bring them in. Oh, that's and, nice, that whole uh, sense of hospitality. Uh, yes, so my dad, the, my mom open to receiving, and my dad always inviting, mm -hmm. and he was well known in, in our little town mm -hmm. for. But some other ministries that you've had besides teaching? Mm-hmm. Okay, now I was, uh, I, 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 let's see. I taught in Detroit, mm -hmm. went down to Douglas, Arizona, and Winslow, and then was principal in Las Vegas. Okay. And from there, I came back to Detroit and uh, was invited to be part of a Hispanic um, uh, uh, in, in uh, Texas. It's called Mexican American Center. Uh, right, right. Uh, well, uh, Detroit wanted to create something similar, so they called it the H Hispanic American Center. Okay. And I was part of that for a few years. And uh, and it was uh, covered the Midwest region, so mm -hmm. it's about five states mm -hmm. that we'd go and visit, you know, um, you know, d talking about ministry. But then uh, I had the opportunity to go to... Uh, uh, Latin America with a mission uh, with a, a priest that came and uh, he'd recruit people to walk with him to do uh, encuentros in, in 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 different parts of the country, and uh, he invited me to come to with him to Mexico, and there was a group of us that went, and, and so I was down in Mexico for about six weeks, ended up in Guatemala, and mm -hmm. uh, and then when I came back, my dear partners in the Hispanic Center said, uh, we had to close down, but we found you a job. Oh, that was <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the job was with La Sed, which is a Latin Americans for Do Social and Economic Development. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, to um, assure that uh, Hispanic young people have a quality education. And it happened that during that time... And this is in downtown Detroit? This is Detroit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, and what happened was, it, during that time, uh, there was a whole thing of mixing the schools so that there'd be co uh, diversity in right. the schools, mm -hmm. and um, they were, but that was going to cause a bilingual education to be closed down because of the move. Well, I organized the families, and we made a presentation to the school board, and we kept bilingual mm. education in the schools of wonderful, Detroit. Wonderful. And uh, from there, I had met Father John Phelps, who is a redemptress priest, mm -hmm. and he was initiating a program uh, to, again, focus on the, the poor, the marginated, again, dealing with quality education and those kinds of things. Well, that really touched my heart. Mm -hmm. So he started that. Had it already been begun when he when you met him? Uh, he was just initiating it. And what was the name of it? It was at that time. It was called Focus Life. Focus Life. Okay. Yes, and, um, and then he, and he was look and then Father Alex Steinmiller, who's a passionist priest, he uh, was looking for a way to how do I get into. Um, uh, the high school that's close to me because uh, the young people are, are not making it. And so he joined Father John. And then there was a married couple in the, um, in the neighborhood that Father John lived in, which is Holy Redeemer. And uh, he did a, a preaching at the, in the church and 
talking about the, the vision that he had. And the Alex McDonald, he comes up to Father John and says, wow, that sounds so good. Come, come over to my house and we'll talk about it. Well, Father John was over at his house before he got home. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so Alex and Judy McDonald, Father Alex, myself, and Father John are the co-founders. And, and when we began, we were called Focus Life. Right. After a number of years, Father Cunningham, he right. had Focus Hope. Right. He says, Father John, they're mixing us up. <laughs> Focus Life, Focus Hope. So can you change your name? <laughs> Oh, so that's how it got changed. So okay. then that's when we changed it to Life Directions. But we kept Focus Life as the name for the retreat that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the mission of uh, Life Directions. The mission of Life Directions is to walk with people and for them to discover the gift that they are. Uh, and uh, like, I'm just going to go through the programs. In the public school, uh, what we look at is that, and we work with the teachers, and it's an in-school program, mm -hmm. and what we do is we ask the teachers to identify one young person that is focused and has a goal, and two other young people from the same classroom that are kind of not sure of where they're going. And we then gather groups of about 15, and within that group, it's peers inspiring peers. Through the interaction, they uh, challenge each other and uh, grow in various areas. And the topics that, now this is at the very beginning, that we brainstorm issues, you know, what are some concerns that you have? And listening to their areas, we created modules that would be used during those sessions. Yeah, and so we've been doing that for over 40 years in the public schools. 40 years in the public schools. And uh, then we, uh, but the heart of the work is the focus on young adults, which is people out of high school. Because many times after high school, young people come out and, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. Well, the retreat is focused on, the first one is focused on I am a gift. And so during the process of a weekend, and the interaction between themselves as a group. Uh, and at the beginning, we'd have 30 to 40 young people in these retreats. And they would come out of it um, uh, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, an awareness of the gift that they are. Mm -hmm. Because one of the points uh, during the process is young people that are with them, because we have small groups, maybe five to seven, and at, at one point, they, each uh, person shares with, with uh, the other, this is a gift I see in you. Mm -hmm. And so their gifts are affirmed. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you say this has been going for 40 years. Do you get, uh, do some of them come back and do you know what they've been about? Or Oh, for sure. Because uh, one of the things that we seek to do is that the people that we hire to walk with us are people that have gone yeah. through the process. Yeah. And right now we have a, a young woman called Annette Howard that made her retreat back in 1974 okay. and is working with us. Wonderful. And uh, just a living, uh, just so she's so grateful for what had touched her life. Mm -hmm. Because we have a three-level retreat. The first one is, I am a gift. The second one is, I am a gift for others. And then the third one is, discerning how am I going to be a, uh, use that gift that I have. So it's moving. And so the leadership. individuals participate in all three and they stick with it. Yes. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. to go to the second one, you have to have made the first one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then, now so what about education? Is uh, do you encourage them to continue? Oh, to, definitely, yeah. definitely. Because in their discovering that they are a gift, right. uh, and then also in, like for instance, in the schools, the, because we focus in on depressed areas, mm -hmm. young people are not mm -hmm. making it in mm -hmm. school, and there's violence mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. I have an ex a real strong example. I, was, I went to Tucson in 1995 and began Life Directions down there. And the focus was which was the poor area. And uh, so I went to one of the schools that was very violent. Within a year, there was a complete change in the schools. 
and the pr the principal and the teachers actually made a tape mm -hmm. uh, sharing uh, the, the the change that had happened in their school because of the program that we had. It's wonderful, wonderful. And the uh, and so the focus that, that we choose when we go to schools is the depressed areas. There's violence. Young people aren't making it. And we have just in the last few years. Uh, it's ongoing, but uh, just that we focused on this. Uh, some young people, I remember this young woman, she's very quiet, and this young man, very shy. And uh, when they'd be in a program, uh, and I says, well, I need to hear you. And I'd make sure I was sitting far away uh, so for them to project their voice. And they'd finish talking, say, did you hear me? <laughs> anyway, they, they graduated and got significant scholarships to go to ongoing education in college. Now, who did they get the scholarships from? Uh, from, uh, you know, in schools you apply for scholarships. Okay. They and to and so it was, uh, they applied for a scholarship and they were able to receive them. Mm -hmm. and the program sounds very successful. I'm sure there have been some challenges. What oh, were some challenges and how did, how did you meet well, them? <laughs> well, one of the things is uh, when we began, our work was uh, primarily supported by the, the diocese as, as well as the parishes. Okay. But the bishop says you need to separate yourself from the diocese because the diocese will be telling you what to do. And you have a vision, you, and one of the bishops actually told us this, that, that uh, as with that, uh, we um, built, relate, uh, there was uh, a judge, Judge Hathaway, that uh, introduced us to people with funds and things like that within the community. Okay. You know, he really took to the vision that we had and promoted it. And so over the years, uh, you know, people that uh, are caught by the vision and mission that we have uh, introduce us to other people. We have a fundraiser, a yearly fundraiser, uh, which is a dinner of uh, that's uh, you know people that of, of funds, monies, mm -hmm. uh, and businesses come to that, mm -hmm. and that uh, we so we have a ways of funding, and we go more into uh, people of business to s support us more than grants because a grant when your two years yeah, are over yeah. the money is over, but we've been able to. Uh, nurture the relationship with significant people mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. that support our work. So you certainly have learned lots in these last 40 years with Life Directions. What are your hopes for the organization at this time of your life? Uh, well, I think it's that, that number one is uh, that, f especially Father John and myself, that we can replace ourselves right. Succession with people planning. Yeah. With, uh, that ahead. And it's very important that they're faith-based and have really connect with the vis mission and vision of Life Directions. Mm -hmm. And so that is the concern that we have. Uh, but the, um, the work that we do is just incredible. Uh, in in the if you walk would walk it right now, you know when there was that funding crash that the whole right. country went through. Well, that affected us. At that time, we were in uh, six different states. Mm -hmm. We began in Detroit, went to Chicago, San Antonio, Tucson, Arizona, New Orleans, and Salem, Oregon. And the crash happened, and we had to pull back to two. We we're in Chicago and Detroit right now. Oh, so you're only in two places right now. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. But the, the people in those other cities, they still want us to come back, and there's possibilities. And it's just amazing how uh, we get receive monies, uh, new monies, mm -hmm. uh, from different sources. Uh, and so the thing is that we don't... Uh, that we are able to continue the work because it does touch the lives of young people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Rosalie, you've been part of this for 40 years, and that's very, you're very involved, very committed, and uh, at times it's got to be exhausting. What do you do for, uh, to get away from that and to get re-energized? Well, th th now, th 
I don't lose energy by doing what I do. It's so life-giving. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's energizing to me. It's your passion. It is my passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, What do you do for fun? And, and now you're going to tell me that's fun. There's parts of that, I'm sure, that are fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, but it's being with people. And I think it comes from my family also, which is being with people, mm -hmm. uh, celebrating with them. Uh, like we have uh, annual gatherings where uh, in the park, it's Clark Park in Southwest right. area. Right. And uh, we invite people that we've been working with in the different parts of the city mm -hmm. to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, but being with people and uh, mm -hmm. just really energizes me. Mm -hmm. And when you say fun, um, I think is being with people is what's fun for me. Okay. And Good. then every once in a while I get a chance to visit my family back in Arizona. Well, I hope so. Yes. That mm -hmm. sounds like that's a fun place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you're here with us now for a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is your, your well, respite. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming home. Yeah. You know, and, and the, the, uh, the, the, the being home here has been very, good. Uh, very special. Mm -hmm. Because I've met sisters that I've actually was t taught with or lived mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. uh, or they come from the southwest area of the country, and mm -hmm. so it's really to make connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you've your life has certainly uh, been uh, filled with um, certainly bringing a presence to the people who need it a lot. Yes, and you do that with such joy and passion. I know you're very passionate about life directions. Mm -hmm. And you certainly have But I think that. it's not just life directions. I think it's the vision right. of life directions. And what's right. so special, it's right, so in tune. You know, we're talking about resilient communities. Yes, exactly. And that's what we've been doing. It's, it's almost like uh, our D Dominican sisters, they cut on the vision that we have. <laughs> very good, very good. Yes, uh -huh. you're certainly. So all those play the other states that you've been, maybe we need to get that part going again up there. Yes, huh? mm -hmm. Talking if, about if that's what the God has in his plan. That's right. And so good luck as you continue with the succession planning because you can't go on forever. And that's I'm sure right. there's tremendous people that you see that have been part of the program that yes. would be able mm -hmm. to step in and take the position. No one can take the place of you and Father John. Well, you have, yeah, they, they can take the position and get the, <laughs> the enthusiasm. Uh -huh. And the that hope you that... Bring. You know the the thing when the, the the people that take our place is that they have the passion that that's right similar to what that's we right. have. <coughs> Before we bring this to a close, is there anything else you would like to um, say to all of us? Mm -hmm. uh, the other one of the things is really looking at our sisters and the associates, and maybe people that you know, uh, maybe they they'd be caught with uh, what we do. Because what we look for is uh, people like to be mentors to our young people, mm -hmm. which is, you know, they come from areas where uh, for, there's a lot of um, negative things happening. But for them to meet people from uh, uh, professionals as well as people, loving people, Right. That can walk with them because mm -hmm. we had like we have mentors mm -hmm. for our program mm -hmm. in uh, in the high schools, and then we also look for adults to be present to our young people in the retreats because uh, these young people they come from uh, the, the, you know we do have mm -hmm. city and suburbs a mix of that mm -hmm. we have the cultural mm -hmm. mix that mm -hmm. is very important and the age mix. And one of the things is the whole thing of elders mm -hmm. walking right. with the younger people, mm -hmm. of people that are of faith, for these young people to listen and to hear the story of people uh, that are close to the Lord is just very important. Wonderful. And maybe your sharing your story will call others to be part of your ministry. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And as an Adrian Dominican, they know how to get in touch with you. So Sister Rosalie, thank you so much for your journey with us as an Adrian Dominican and your involvement in the many places that you've done ministerial work and as you continue even here while you're recuperating 
and uh, thank you. And don't ever lose that passion for Always. what you are about. That's who you are. Oh, for it's sure. very evident. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. It's a blessing. <laughs>